Well, one man who understands Mrs Forbes' views and how they'll affect her campaign and if, actually, they'd ever have a chance of being enacted is Gavin, Gavin Ashenden, Catholic layman and editor of The Catholic Herald. Uh, good evening, Gavin. Hello, Bev. Good evening. Good evening. Um, was it sensible, do you think, of Kate Forbes to come out with these views at this time? I think it's political suicide. <laughs> but, but the trouble is she went into... Um, politics as a Christian, and she is a Christian, and um, she happens to believe, as all Christians do, that marriage is best between a man and a woman. Um, uh, and it seems to me that's about the only view that our liberal pluralistic society won't allow. Oh, I think there's lots of views that aren't, aren't currently allowed. Um, but is it, is it right when she says, well, these are only my personal views, it wouldn't affect any policy? That can't be genuine, can it? Well, of course it is, because um, everybody has their own preferred moral outlook. Um, but there are very few people who, in a liberal, pluralistic society, want to impose that on other people. We don't, we don't do that. She set out to govern society according to the SNP's agenda. And the fact that she doesn't want to practice abortion uh, and that she's not gay and she wants to be married, that's got nothing to do with the public policies she would be elected to represent. There's a kind of uh, sort of almost like a, a paranoia that uh, there's an assumption that Christians want to make everybody live like them and that they don't. It's a matter of free choice. But you say that she may not, she may, it's not that she doesn't want to practice abortion. She's actually off on maternity leave at the moment, actually, uh, coincidentally, as, as we speak. Um, but I think it does play into the idea that, that a candidate like that is just not living in 2023 and therefore can't relate to the electorate. I mean, you know, she was, she was saying, it went so far as to say, you know, that, that sex should only be within marriage. How can we put any sort of decision making about sex education in schools or contraception access for the for teenagers or for anyone, frankly, that isn't married in the hands of somebody that thinks like that? Yeah, but, but that's a very odd view to have. It assumes that progress only goes in one direction. The fact is, um, all, all these matters are open to argument. Um, what works better? What makes the best happiness? What gives society the greatest stability? The things that we're doing at the moment don't work very well for society. They're great for, for, for liberal choice. But are, are you saying that nobody's allowed to argue for a different way of doing sex and a different way of doing marriage? That would be ludicrous. I think there are some fundamental things that have changed in society that the vast majority of the population would agree with, which is that sex outside of marriage is OK, if not to be encouraged, and that abortion is an option for some people at some times in their life. And for somebody to, to, to state quite publicly that they don't agree with those two very basic um, freedoms that we have, I think is odd, frankly. But are you saying that people who believe in sex outside marriage have closed minds and they can't consider any other possibility? There are some very good reasons psychologically and sociologically and in, and in terms of sexual health in the way in which we do sex. And the idea that what we've come upon at the moment is simply the very best possible way of human beings managing their personal relationships um, is un indefensible. There are different ways we should be open to talking about them. We are, and that's why we are talking about them. And I guess you would argue, therefore, that she is right to have, she has a right to say this. But as you say, it is political suicide. Those views are, frankly, I'm pleased that they are niche now. I, I, I'm not judging having a faith. That's wonderful. I would applaud anybody that has a Christian faith or any faith of any particular hue. I, I applaud that. I, I respect that. But I think for somebody who wants to lead a main political party in 2023 to say that sex should only be in marriage and that they don't believe in gay marriage is archaic. Well, but why are they asking the same things of her, of Mr. Youssef? Islam believes exactly the same things. Why is there no fuss about the fact that he's Muslim and these are Islamic views uh, and um, that both candidates actually share the same views about private morality? Why is it only the Christian who's getting in the neck and, and being told that it's political suicide? Well, I guess she's the, well, you, you make a very good point and I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. I guess she's the, the only one who, who has come out and said this at, at this particular time. Um, and as you say, it, it won't go down well with him. <laughs> Sorry, go she's on, Gavin. She's the one who's being asked about it. 
Well, well the, the fact is, everyone knows that Musaf is, is, is a Muslim. And everyone also knows that the views that Laura, Laura Forbes holds are, are the same as Muslim views. But but none of the none of the reporters are asking him what what the, what, the, what his faith teaches and whether he believes in it or not. He's getting a completely free pass. That can't be right in a free and uh, and um, open society. I, I, well, I don't agree. I would love to, I would love to ask him that question. I don't know if anybody has particularly asked him this question, and, and I no, would hope haven't. that we have the opportunity <laughs> to hear him answer that. And as you say, that will therefore be a more a more level playing field. Maybe we are giving her a hard time. Um, she, she's come out and said, you know, people want, uh, uh, what does she say, longing for a politician to answer straight questions with straight answers, which seems apt for somebody that doesn't believe in gay marriage. Um, but out of these two candidates, I think it's, it's fair to say you, you that Kate Forbes would have your vote. Well, I think it was very refreshing to hear what she thought a woman was. And when she said a woman is not somebody who can commit rape, I think I and a whole lot of other people breathe a huge sigh of relief. The fact is, it's probably more important for a politician to have moral principles that they hold to in their own lives, some kind of personal integrity, than it is um, the, the notion that they... they um, uh, that they don't want to impose on other people. I think it's a very welcome thing to have a politician that has integrity. And that because she doesn't want to impose her views on others, we should respect her. I think it's very welcome.